Welcome to Veritas Studios. I'm going to talk you through how to insulate a shed floor, which should be handy for a home office or any shed really. I'm going to do it using Lego because why not? And this is the little amazing 3D model I have built. These are your joists, so the floor joists, the timber joist that your floor will sit on. And what I'd recommend doing, if possible, if there isn't a, a timber well, sheet on top of this already, or timber boarding, what I'd recommend doing is getting some metal chicken wire, some mesh, and stapling it to the side of the joist, so it hangs down and creates like a U-shaped tray up to the side of the other joist. And then within that, that tray you've created, so it doesn't touch the floor, which is represented by this green grass, very accurate. I'd fill that with fiberglass. So the fiberglass I have chosen is pink. So this is your fiberglass insulation going between the joists. You can use other stuff like uh, polystyrene or PIR board. I just think fiberglass works a bit better. Things like polystyrene and uh, PIR board, if you do have any kind of mouse infestation or something, they're just gonna chew it up and it's gonna end up flying everywhere. I know potentially you could have mice living in the fiberglass, but they don't chew it up and doesn't sort of blow around your garden, so you can deal with the problem and not have dust going everywhere. Next, this is a sheet of plywood. I go plywood because it is a sheet material. I wouldn't go anything that's made of glue and bits of sawdust like chipboard at this point. I think those tend to rot through. I've had a lot of sheds and I just don't think that sort of thing is useful on the exterior of the shed. So that goes on top of your floor joists. So as you can see, you've got the insulation underneath, not touching the grass, nice and dry. So if there's a, a load of rain, no problems. You may already have a shed, so you may not be able to get underneath to fill it with insulation. So if it's at this stage, or if you have insulated between the joists, then I would do this anyway, because this is what I've done. So this is your plywood floor. I would get a sheet of two inch polystyrene or PIR board. I went two inch polystyrene, the flooring stuff, which is a lot denser. Jab floor is the make I went for. And that's all over the floor. The reason being because if you tread on it, it doesn't break to pieces. When I say tread on it, well, you can actually walk on it, but you ideally board over it. So you whack that all over your floor. That's two inches of polystyrene, nice. And then you board over that. I've run out of big bits of Lego. This is your internal floor. And I use 22 millimeter tongue and groove chipboard, but the moisture resistant kind, it's nice and thick. It's moisture resistant, so you get less problems. And I also don't use chipboard, but you've got this layer of polystyrene. Polystyrene is notoriously waterproof, so it kind of creates a barrier. You can whack a, a damp course membrane through there or a vapor barrier, which would be even nicer, and then run that up your walls, etc. But this just creates, you're not gonna, that, that um, polystyrene isn't gonna break apart. You've got a nice flooring. It's tongue and groove, which means the tongue of one part slots into the groove of another part. <laughs> that sounds so rude. It slots together and there's no gaps. That's what you want. And I glue that all together. Um, exterior PVA glue, uh, the weather proof stuff. I'll put a link in the description. Job done. And that lasts for years. And with all that insulation, you're good. And obviously insulate your walls and your ceiling properly. But a lot of people don't insulate shed floors and you'd be surprised how much heat you lose through a floor. Especially if you take the insulation out from underneath You've got a load of cold air. That's, I'm assuming you don't have a concrete base because sometimes you don't. If you've just got joists and big old gaps, you've got all that cold air blowing straight through. This insulation underneath makes a big difference. You can't always do that. Sometimes a lot of sheds do come with really small uh, joists, which are like two by twos. Mine are six by twos or eight by twos. I can't remember. I've got six, in six inches of insulation. Uh, I don't know, I'd always bump up whatever they give you with a shed, I'd almost sack that off immediately and just put thicker timbers because otherwise it's gonna be bouncing all over the place. But worst case scenario, sheet of polystyrene on top. The polystyrene doesn't cost too much and will make a big difference. And as per my other video on how to insulate a shed, polystyrene all up the walls, insulate between the rafters and polystyrene over that and then board it out with OSB because it's nice and cheap or 22 millimeter moisture chipboard is what I use mainly now because soundproofing, you don't want gaps. This is a recording studio, you don't want any gaps and it all, well, tongue and groove, it slots. There's no, there's, the joins overlap and once you glue them, it's completely sealed. So it's 
brilliant for recording studios and it's really dense as well so less sound gets out it's uh, it's nicer and the reason I've bored all the walls and ceiling I can get a fixture a fixture I can get a fixing anywhere for screwing guitars to walls that light screw to a wall there's a TV on the wall everything's on the wall just keep it off the floor it's just easier hopefully that was helpful please check out my other videos I've done so on how to heat a shed or an outdoor office I'm gonna do more on this series just because people have been asking a lot of questions uh, so yeah drop me a comment if there's anything you'd like to know I might do another video on it because it's quite interesting thank you for watching like and subscribe Thank you.